all of our drug czars have either been police chiefs or, or military generals or professional moralists. I think we might possibly just be better off without it. Hi, I'm Ethan Nadelman. I'm the founder and executive director of the Drug Policy Alliance. We're trying to build a national organization, a national movement to end the war on drugs in America and really around the world. I think the number one thing is basically to, to break the taboo on, on really open and honest dialogue about all drug policy options, including legalization. Unfortunately, it's not yet penetrated the Congress, it's not quite penetrating the state legislatures. More and more people think it, but not enough people are saying it. And it's breaking that taboo, putting that debate out there, that's ultimately going to transform the consciousness of the American public around this issue. I'd say one of the biggest obstacles is the pervasive fear and ignorance that permeates discussions of this issue from legislative bodies to the American public. I think the most focused obstacle is the prison industrial complex, the drug prohibition industrial complex. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, earning their money off the war on drugs, in positions of power to defend vested interests, police, prosecutors, prison guards, private prison builders, you name it. I mean, they are focused on protecting what they have. They are focused on protecting the status quo. The ones who dissent from the mainstream in that world fear to speak out. So that's a major and well-funded source of op opposition. I would give Obama an A compared to all of his predecessors going back to Jimmy Carter. I give him about a C minus in terms of what the country really needs to have happening. He has pointed drug policy in a somewhat new direction in this country. He did make good on the commitments he made during the campaign about reforming the crack powder laws, about legalizing funding for needle exchange, about pulling back on federal interference on medical marijuana. But the budget remains the same. The money keeps flowing down the same coffers and down the toilet on interdiction enforcement efforts. The whole notion that politics should no longer trump science He's obviously abandoned that when it comes to drug policy. So it's been a step in the right direction. Uh, I think that the recent Republican takeover of the House of Representatives is going to make things more difficult. I think that having people like Lamar Smith now chairing the House Judiciary Committee is going to be a significant step backward to where we were before. But I think there's also going to be opportunities to cut the drug war budget. That's one area where Republicans and conservatives in Washington have sometimes been ahead of the Democrats. Cut the drug war waste. Some of the low-hanging fruit are some of this money down the drain on anti-drug propaganda on TV that we know doesn't work. Some of the low-hanging fruit are the D.A.R.E. programs where cops go into schools and are actually the worst deliverers of drug education. I'd also point to what are called the burn grants which are unrestricted, more or less, federal money to local police departments that are then used to arrest people for marijuana offenses and other petty drug offenses. I think a lot of the money we're pouring into the military and interdiction, we know that whether you double or triple the amount of money going into tree-keeping drugs out of the country, it has almost no impact on the actual uh, availability or price of drugs in this country. So some of those are going to make very good targets. I'm even curious about the notion of abolishing the drug czar's office. I feel a little ambivalent about that. On the one hand, if you had a really good drug czar, as you do, for example, in the Netherlands, it would actually be a constructive thing. But given that all of our drug czars have either been police chiefs or, or military generals or professional moralists, I think we might possibly just be better off without it. Well, I'll tell you, I was just in Lisbon a couple weeks ago and had an opportunity to talk to all of the folks involved in the Portuguese drug policy. And it was really interesting because what they're doing is that when the police stop people for drug possession or in one way or another, what they're doing is they're not dealing with it through the criminal justice system. They're basically sending them to a, uh, uh, an advisory board that lies outside the criminal justice system. And that board has no legal powers to coerce people into treatment, to coerce them into jail. It does not drug test people. What it basically aims to do is to enhance people's consciousness around what they're actually doing by taking drugs and to try to provide them with the services that they might need to try to stop using drugs or get control of their drug use. And the interesting thing is that here you have an approach that seems soft-minded or soft-headed in every respect, yet in fact the results in Portugal are demonstrably positive that in fact all sorts of you know, criteria like the number of people overdosing or getting HIV or getting arrested or being involved in crime is basically staying the same or dropping while in many other countries it's getting worse. So Portugal seems to me like an awfully good model. 
Well, I would say you're likely to see ballot initiatives in California and Colorado to legalize marijuana. And I'd bet 50-50 that at least one of those win. Now, that's going to be a transformative moment. We saw that Prop 19 on the ballot in California last year. You know, that didn't win. But the fact that it got 46.5% of the vote, the fact that it got more votes than Meg Whitman did running for governor and she spent a gazillion dollars more than Carly Fiorina got, the fact that 60% of the people who voted for Jerry Brown voted for it, the fact that it transformed the national discussion, the fact that when President Barco in Colombia convened a summit of Latin American presidents a few weeks before Election Day in America, the number one subject on their agenda was what if Prop 19 wins? I'd say that we're making remarkable momentum with respect to the changing the marijuana laws. I'd say I'm more optimistic now than I've ever been. I mean, the rapid transformation in opinion around legalizing marijuana from 36% in favor in 2005 to 46 in favor just a few months ago, I think the momentum's with us. I think that removing marijuana from the criminal justice system is something that can be attained in America over the next decade. I think we can roll back the prison population. The bigger challenge is going to be, can we actually move into an entirely new dialogue about how we accept the reality that drugs are here to stay and figure out more sensible and pragmatic ways of dealing with them without relying on the crutch of the criminal justice system.